everybody. I get the greatest calls every day and uh, I feel so fortunate to be able to help. And this is one, if you happen to house sit or uh, you bring dogs into your home and house sit them there, or maybe you foster dogs, you may be very interested in this topic that was brought up yesterday by a caller named Sandy. Um, let me give you a little bit of background. Sandy has a five-year-old setter, and he, Max is um, usually tolerant, but situ situationally aggressive. Uh, she has offered to take care of two dogs, Great Danes, Daisy and Jack, 15 months and nine month old, Great Danes. But um, because of the history, naturally she's concerned, she wants to do it and wants to do it right so that none of the dogs will be harmed. Um, so let me give you a little bit more background. Uh, Max the Setter, a sporting breed that is usually very, very tolerant, has been to doggy daycare and boarding and the vet and dog parks his life, all his life, without problems. Uh, she has neighbor dogs to visit and that's no problem either. Um, but recently he's been exhibiting more and more territoriality. The um, it, she's also been careful that when delivery people come or are expected, uh, he may aggressively rush them, so she wants to put him indoors for that. Now, I have already had a phone conversation with Sandy, and Max doesn't have formal obedience com uh, training, and uh, teaching him one command control around distractions is something that I would highly recommend. But in the absence of that, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do in a pinch. I do have some advice. Uh, so Max in the past did act aggressively toward Daisy, the 15 month old Dane, when she was much younger. And now Sandy's done some research and she's very, very smart. She's removed food and toys and treats and anything high value. Excellent. Um, but often that isn't enough. She said to me that she was considering, okay, can we baby gate the dogs? Can, should, should I crate Jack, the younger Great Dane, the nine month old? Um, I have a shock collar for Max, uh, and he's usually responsive to the tone of the shock collar, uh, but he, she, she's not quick enough on the draw, she said, because it does happen out of the blue, for instance, if he would rush a delivery person. Uh, she also has a muzzle, but she says that seems so cruel. So let's skip forward. After I got that email, we had a phone conversation and I said, you know, you can do this safely by utilizing the tie-out stations, which happened to be on my housebreaking page, but um, the applications of the tie-out station are so much broader than that, I've got to redo that. And as soon as I do, I'll let you know. Also on my YouTube page, uh, you will see a, a separate playlist, is what they call it, for tie-out stations. And I have many more videos there. Of course, I've got to bring them over to my um, website. Gosh, am I behind? Anyway. When we talked, I had asked Sandy to view those tie-out station videos and then uh, make a list of questions and we would have a future conversation. She did that and she emailed these fantastic questions, which I am going to uh, go over with you via video. She said, okay, I watched the videos and I understand what tie-out stations are now. For Max, I think we're well beyond this technique. Um, when we are here alone, no other dogs. That's fine. Except that she did say that she's got to confine him when delivery people come and uh, she might consider using tie-out stations then as well. Um, next question, or first question, are all dogs on tie-outs separated from each other in each room I'm in at all times. I found out that it appears Sandy has the space to have three large dogs 
on tryouts in the same room. Not all of us uh, have that wonderful opportunity. Um, and yes, that is exactly what I'm recommending. And if you want snuggle time, if you want to take the dogs off tie-out stations, you do it one at a time and that dog is leashed. So if you want them up on the, the couch or the bed or um, you want to play with them, great. But as he walks past those other dogs, hopefully you have taught the dog to heal. And if you haven't, you can do it simultaneously in this exercise. Um, uh, and you you heal, you do a couple of sits, a couple of fronts, tricks even. Whatever commands that the dog knows and you know your expectations and how to enforce, do that as an exercise before the personal snuggle time begins. And then he goes back on the tile and maybe take the next dog out. This is a way to build comfort about the dogs being around one another in a way that will never happen if you're using baby gates or crates. Second question, is one on a tie out and one loose, or two on a tie out and one loose in which this case, um, which one, question mark? Excellent question. Let's say that aggression was not the problem. Let's say that instead you're bringing a new dog into your household and instilling good house manners, not to go in the garbage, jump on counters, um, get on furniture if you don't want that, or into other rooms, not to soil, not to chew, uh, not to jump and bark at the windows, whatever your desire is. Let's say that we have one dog that is really perfectly, it displays perfectly acceptable behavior, and another that's in training mode. It's fine to have that dog loose and the dog in training mode on tie-outs and only interacting with you when you can give them undivided attention or you're taking them out to go potty, things like that. Uh, but in this case, I would have all dogs on tie-outs, uh, uh, take them off the tie-outs, leash them, interact personally, and then they go back on the tie-outs and you do that one at a time. And that's because there is potential for a dog to get hurt because of previous displays of aggression. Beyond getting hurt, they can develop, the non-aggressive dog will develop aggressive tendencies, and that's really unfortunate. When Max wants to get away, is it okay to just put him in a room and not allow Duke in there at all? I don't know. Uh, it, it, with this method, he stays on the tie-out in the room that you're in with the dogs. It'll be a good training exercise for five days. Fourth question, is there a problem allowing them on the couches and beds? Max lounges on the couch at all times and sleeps in bed with me at night. Uh, I think Max needs to get accustomed to being in that dog bed. and. This is not a forever thing, but it's definitely a good tr and needed training exercise at this point. It'll make him more adaptable. It will teach him, and I, I'm assuming, we didn't talk about this, I didn't ask about it, but I, I, I see it every, in almost every single household situation I go into that when the dog is relaxing, they plant themselves in the traffic pattern where they have a full view of everything going on in the house so that they're never completely relaxed and they can bolt to attention and address whatever interests them, whether it's a delivery person, someone coming to the door, um, the squirrels that tend to taunt our dogs outside those windows, you name it. So I would I don't see a problem with Max um, being brought into the bedroom in the evening and sleeping in the bed like he always did. Uh, now there are exceptions to that, but I didn't hear that there have been any problems like with, I don't know if Sandy is married or not, so um, if I, I do often have this question where 
the spouse enters the room and the dog acts aggressively uh, toward the person entering. Uh, not good. Get that dog off the bed at least temporarily and onto a tie-out in the bedroom. I, I, I am going to reserve comment on Max specifically, but I don't I don't think that's one of the problems. And I, I'm not one of those trainers who says, oh, you always have to eat before the dog. You always have to um, go in and outdoors before the dog. He should never be on the bed um, because it destroys pack leadership. I don't buy into that one little bit. It's about responsiveness. And if your dog is on the bed and you can tell him to get off the bed when you want, should be fine. Huh. So, also yesterday, I was talking to someone who had a barking problem with her dog. And I want to address that in my next video. Or, if you have questions on this same topic and you want to email me uh, or Facebook me, let me know. Uh, because I'd be happy to do a video conversation with you too. Um, one caveat. Today is December 11th. My cell phone service, which I switched over a couple of days ago, stopped working. So if you call me and it says my number is disconnected, it, I, I stopped to make this video before going over to the cell phone store. Probably I have my priorities confused. But I don't think so. <laughs> Until we speak, don't give up on my phone number. 414-289-7785. And in the meantime, you can text.